Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working step by step through the ABRSM Theory grades. And we've made a great start to the Grade 5 Music Theory and Practice Workbook because we're going to continue to work through that. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. You can download those in US letter or A4 and they'll accompany each step of this series. I'll be making reference to those throughout this book and also there's a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials also on my website you can access information about the books that I have available I've written how to take your ABRSM music theory exam it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time in the exam room when it's actually exam day so if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there for you if you can give me a like, that'd be fab. Uh, that'd be really encouraging to me. And if you subscribe to my channel to keep updated, there's lots more in store. And so now if you grab your pencil, eraser and ruler and we're ready to go. So turn with me to page six and we're ready to get going. So let's find page six. And you'll see that we're starting to look at the tenor clef. So I'm going to refer to this as section B and that way you will know to turn to page or section B in your PDF documents. And so now there's some information here that can help you. If it is that you're unfamiliar with the tenor clef, if you don't perhaps use that in the instruments that you um, are used to reading clefs with, uh, this is more to uh, related to people who perhaps I think play trombone and also a cello player might um, deal with this clef too. However, you'll notice it's very sim similar in principle to the, the uh, alto clef. You can see this uh, sign, this clef is exactly the same, but notice it's positioned one line higher. So now middle C is here. The second line down is now middle C. So everything shunts around in relation to that. And so I've given you a few sample notes just as a reference point and then you can work out from this point but really just always counting from middle C if you want to have a practice at some of the tenor clefts you can just trace over these to begin with uh, but I don't think you'll find it too difficult and then of course you've got to now account for repositioning all of your sharps and flats for your key signatures and so you can see that again here so if you want to just go ahead and have a go at naming the notes in exercise one, if you get stuck you can refer to the um, PDF document. However, have a go and working it out without referring to the document and then you can double check yourself. It's just a good idea in terms of revision to work that out. Remember, always working out from middle C, which is here now. So I'm hoping you've had a little go of that. And so you can see that there's C, B, A. So if we continue in that vein, C, B, A, G, F, E, and so on. So I'm not going to continue counting those. I'll just trust that you know how to work those out. Of course, we know that's middle C. So C, D, E, F. And then if you're not sure here, if we run out, we can either work from one that you know, so we know that's E, so let's just carry on. So here you could also count your octaves and you'll find one, three, five, seven, eight takes us to C again. So you could just work it out that way. So we know that's an E, there's an F, F, G, A. So we think there's C, B, this one must be a D, just counting down from this E. This one is a G, F, the space, G is the line. This one is D, one above middle C. This one here is um, a G, C, B, A, G, yep. This one here, if we've got one below the C, that must be a B. 
and then here C D E there we go just takes a little bit of figuring out and now we've just got to get used to writing our flats and sharps in the correct configuration now we can just use this as a reference point and just add or delete the sharps and flats as we need to for the key signature so that's part one of exercise two part two is we need to also include the tonic chord as the key that they've given us so it's a, it's a good idea to have your keys written out or your circle of fists written out to hand just to take that pressure off trying to hold too many pieces of information in your mind at once I would always have that written out and write it out separately every time it's good revision don't just use the same copy but just keep writing it out every time so then D flat major has a key signature of five flats B E A D G and so we've now got to position those so C B is here now below that E top line A is the middle line C B A and the D is the top space now above the middle C and the G is going to be this second space up C B A G there we go and so now we need to write our triad D F A the flats will take care of by the key signature so D F A so we know it's going to be C B A is our top note 5 3 1 we could work it downwards so let's just double check that C B A G F D there we go so a flat major, B flats, E flats, A flats and D flats. So we can use this to help us. We just don't need to write quite so many. We just need four flats. So B flats, E flats, C B A flats and D flats. There we go. And then we need the triad A C E. So C B A. C, E, there we go. So I hope you get the grasp of that. So if you haven't done so already, have a go at this yourself and just have a go at completing this. And you can always come back into the video to double check that. So B flat minor is related to D flat major. So we need this key signature again. B flats, E flats, A flats, Oh, got a bit off there. D flats and G flats. And then we need a B. So C is there, B must be one below. First, third, fifth. Next one. So G sharp minor is related to B major, so we need now to have five sharps. So you can just use this to help you, F, C, G, D, A, but just work it out as well. So let's have a look. So C, B, A, G, F is the second line. The C is obviously the line that the clef is based on. G will be one above the F, the space. D is one above the C and the a C B A middle line there we go so we need a G B D triad C B A G is going to be the second space first third fifth C sharp minor is related to E major so we only need four sharps now so using that as a reference we've got our F sharp C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, that's right, and then of course C is our tenor clef here, so there's C, E, and then we'll just use a ledger line for the G. So F minor is related to A flat major, so we just need this key signature again here, 
So there's our B flats, E flats, C B A flats, and then D flats, C D, that's that. Oh, that's good, that's it, yep. Yeah. And then we know the triad is F A C, so our top note is C, and we can work it backwards. There we go. B major is five sharps, so we can just copy this one here. Five cuts go down and five cuts go, that's right. So here we go. Second line is F, C, G, D, and then we want the A as well. There we go, and then we want a B, D, F triad, so there's the C, B is one step, B, D, F. And that's the principle of the tenor clef. After that, it's just a matter of working it out and counting things carefully. I do hope that's helpful to you. I hope you're enjoying this. We're making a great start on grade five. If you can give me a like, that'd be fab. That'd be really helpful and encouraging to me. If you can subscribe to my channel to keep updated, there's lots more in store. And please do go to SharonBill.com and make use of all the information there to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.